I purchased a Parrot Disco in 2018 after Parrot announced that they were going to discontinue them and retailers dropped the price to about a fourth of what they were originally listed for. It continues to be one of my favorite planes to fly, especially FPV with the goggles that came with it. Most retailers are now out of them, however, they do occasionally show up on eBay. One of the limits of the Parrot Disco is the restrictions on bank angles and pitch that are built into the controller. However, there is a way around that by using your own radio. I had not tried to do that because the instructions that come along with the conversion for adding your own receiver and using your own radio specifically say that a spectrum radio cannot be used. After I learned a little bit more about the technology, I realized this was not technically impossible, it was simply a proprietary issue. Spectrum does not want to include any of the serial communications listed on this page that are used by its competitors, and the competitors that use that serial communication do not want to use the Spectrum communication protocol. My first thought was to use a PWM to SBUS converter similar to the one shown here. I did order one, but it took quite a while to get and it just showed up a few days ago. That was not my preferred approach because it still took a lot of wires and it had an extra piece of equipment. Instead, I found a receiver made by Orange RX and distributed by Hobby King that will accept the DSMX protocol from the Spectrum radio, but will output the SBUS output to the controller. However, if you buy one, be careful because the exact same model also comes in a CPPM output version and you have to read the description closely to make sure which one you're buying. This is a photo of my disco before I installed the receiver and the SBUS connection. You can, however, see the two Velcro pads that I use for the receiver and the satellite on the receiver. This is a photo of the disco after I installed the receiver, the satellite to the receiver, and the servo lead from the receiver to the SBUS input on the Parrot controller. The SBUS output on the orange receiver is the same as the bind port. Here is the disco with the canopy cover on showing the two leads from the orange receiver and the connection to the satellite receiver. The disco documentation shows the channels lining up in this order and that is the order that was used in other YouTube videos with Futaba radios and receivers. However, that is not one I discovered when using this configuration. When using the orange receiver with a Spectrum radio, the channels actually line up in the more normal configuration that I've shown here. The instructions are also a little confusing when it comes to the flight modes. As you can see in the description here, it says that assisted mode is only possible with a Parrot radio, but then it says assisted mode is possible with your own radio. A description later on in the instructions is more instructive. Flight mode 1 is assisted mode using the Parrot controller. Flight mode 2 is assisted mode using your own radio. And flight mode 3 is the full manual mode with all of the limits removed. Now I will demonstrate the basic setup on a Spectrum DX9. First you need to create a new model and set the model type. You should always name your models. 
I normally assign flight modes to the three position switch B in the upper left hand corner. I normally add voice names to my flight modes. Besides assigning the flight mode to the three position switch B, I also assign the takeoff and landing function to push button I, the emergency switch to switch A, and the return home switch to switch H. These are on auxiliaries 1, 2, and 3. All of the channels, except for the throttle, need to be reversed. Beginner mode. Smart mode. I wanted to add some expo and a low rate when flying in manual mode. Initially I assigned that to a switch, but that created a problem for me because I left it in the low mode on my first flight and I was in flight mode 2 which is assisted. The assisted mode already has a low rate and my low rate on top of that made it almost impossible to bank the parrot and I almost had a flyaway. Therefore, I went back and assigned the lower rate to come on only when I'm in flight mode 3 and left it in 100% in flight modes 1 and 2. I normally add some custom voices for switch changes so that I can be reminded easily what each switch does. You need to bind the receiver to the radio. To do that, 
move the servo connection from the controller to the throttle position so that you can get power to the receiver during the bind process. Plug a bind plug into port 1, which is the bind port, and turn on the parrot and wait until the receiver flashes orange. At that point in time, you can put your radio into bind mode and turn it on. In the DX9, that's done by holding down the I button when you power it up. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry. Bind complete. When you're done binding, turn the parrot disco off and make sure that you remove the bind plug and put the connection to the controller back into the bind port to complete the S-Bus connection. Once the radio setup is complete, use your mobile device and the FreeFlight Pro app to calibrate the controller. Select the Disco Wi-Fi network in your settings and then open the FreeFlight Pro app on your mobile device. Under the controller icon in the upper right hand window, you should now see your radio and the S-Bus listed. You can pull up the button mapping and go down to the emergency and return home. By touching those items, you can select a switch. Uh, once you have done that, toggle the switch that you set up in your radio to activate it within the app. You can see the reaction in the app in this video. You can then calibrate the two joysticks in each of the directions by selecting edit under each of the items and then moving the joystick to its minimum and maximum position to calibrate it within the app. At this time you should also test any buttons or switches that you've set to make sure that you get the proper reaction in the Free Flight Pro app. As a final step, put your radio in Flight Mode 3 and check your control surfaces on the Parrot Disco. I think you will find that they are significantly out of adjustment. I had to adjust my aileron sub trims uh, by a significant amount to get my two ailerons to match and then use the elevator sub trim to get them zeroed out. For final steps, please make sure that you do not have a reduced rate in Flight Mode 2. If you put in a reduced rate on top of the reduced rate in the Assisted Mode, you'll find the Disco very hard to fly. Make sure you put it in Flight Mode 3 and test all your control surfaces to make sure that they go in the right direction and that your throttle control is working properly. For your first flight, you might want to consider a co-pilot who is holding on to the Parrot Disco radio so that you can switch back into Flight Mode 1 if necessary. When flying with your Spectrum radio, you can still use the video telemetry on your mobile device, but you will have to use the Wi-Fi connection since you won't have the USB connection from the Parrot Disco radio available. Your range might be limited for the video. The only remaining issue is that the throttle seems to run high in flight mode 2. I have not found a solution for this. There's no easy way to test flight mode 2 when you have the disco on the ground because it immediately shuts off when it cannot achieve altitude. The throttle control seems to work fine in flight mode 3. 
Due to the local weather, I've only done a couple of brief flights with this configuration, and I haven't yet taken any video. I hope to do that later and post an additional video uh, showing some of my flight experience. If you have any questions or any experience of your own flying with this configuration, please post your comments below. Thank you. Thank you.